Hi guys, so today I wanted to share with you an amazing story. It's about a very bright 15 year old young lad named William Godori. He has found something archaeologists have missed for centuries. The young lad often wondered why Mayan cities were not located near rivers and seemed to be randomly plotted. This is where the boy made a miraculous discovery. He realized that the ancient ruins aligned with star constellations above, and by using Google Earth, he managed to match up 117 ancient Mayan ruins with star constellations. Even discovering a set of three stars the Mayans clearly held in high regards that we were unaware of previously. I did not understand why the Maya built their cities away from rivers, on marginal lands and in the mountains, Godori told French-Canadian magazine Journal de Montreal. They had to have another reason, and as they worshipped the stars, the idea came to me to verify my hypothesis. I was really surprised and excited when I realized that the most brilliant stars of the constellations match the largest Maya cities. By plotting these star locations, William has seemingly discovered the ruins of a very ancient pyramid, accompanied by a city in ruins, untouched by humans for over a thousand years. As Daniel Delisle from the Canadian Space Agency told Samuel Osborne at The Independent, the satellite images revealed certain linear features on the forest floor that looked anything but natural. There are enough items to suggest it could be a man-made structure, he said. Godori has tentatively named the lost city Kaakchi, meaning fire mouth, and will be working with researchers from the Canadian Space Agency to get his discovery published in a peer-reviewed journal. He'll also be presenting his findings at Brazil's International Science Fair in 2017. However, in a strange development, a scientist, supposedly, quote, familiar with this Mexican region where the odd city-like features have been discovered, says at least one of them is an abandoned cornfield. How he knows this is unknown. We visited them, and my grad students know them quite well. Anthropologist Joffrey E. Braswell from the University of California, San Diego's Mesoamerican Archaeology Laboratory told George Dvorsky at Gizmodo. Whether this is an attempt at concealing the finds from the public is unknown, but it is sure to put a halt to a public disclosure of all of Godori's finds at Brazil's Science Fair. There are indeed confirmed lost Mayan cities in this region, two only being discovered last year. One was a completely new find, while the other was a rediscovery a confirmation of reports of its existence. With the young man coming up with such a compelling theory, complete with confirmed hypothesis and ruins being confirmed as dotting the 1800 square mile region of jungle, you have to wonder how specialists construct such positive leads off from such a bright young person without further investigation, whether withheld from public scrutiny or not. As always, thanks for watching guys, take care. Lake Superior, the largest of the North American Great Lakes, it is also the largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area. Believed to have first been inhabited 10,000 years ago, after the retreat of the last ice age. However, there exist copper mines upon many of the lake's islands, which many researchers have concluded to be prehistoric. A sophisticated array of tunnels litters the islands, or more specifically, all of North America. Scarred by ancient mine pits as deep as 150 feet, carbon-14 testing of wood remains found in sockets of copper artifacts indicated they are at least 5,700 years old, although artifacts and evidence at some sites have suggested a date far older than what has been put forward. For example, some investigators believe that the mines were not even built by humans but are the remains of a sophisticated mining operation that was once undertaken by alien visitors many thousands of years ago. Similar in scale to the ancient Carolina mica mines, mica being a material which we use in electrical components. It must be noted that all of these prehistoric mines show evidence of being abruptly abandoned. Whether this is evidence of the death of an unknown king or queen, or evidence for catastrophe is unknown. All along Lakeshore are vestiges of this once highly successful ancient operation. The most astonishing of remnants catalogued publicly has to be the enormous lump of pure copper found in 1771 near the bank of the Ontonagon River. In 1945, it was floated downriver on a raft by a James K. Paul, 
and was eventually appropriated by an agent of the United States government. It was then shipped to Detroit and on to Washington, where it eventually slipped into the bowels of the Smithsonian. Known as the Ontonagon Boulder, it weighs 3,708 pounds. It was apparently well known to Native Americans. According to the Keweenaw Bay Indian community, the boulder was used by tribe members to make offerings to its manitou, or spirit, to seek improvement in their health and well-being. Just how old is the Ontonagon boulder, or indeed, the mine from which it came? Although many would like you to believe the mines are less than 5,000 years of age, we think many factors surrounding them suggest that they are far older than that. We have often postulated as to the precise age of the great monuments of Giza, undoubtedly the most astonishing structures left by the ancient world. There are many questions which persist regarding this ancient site. Who built these extraordinary buildings? Why did they build them? And of course, when was this unimaginably enormous task undertaken? Interestingly, there exists an enigmatic statue which it seems, although predictably little shared by academia, actually predates this astonishing time within Earth's history. Quoted as, possibly one of the rarest finds of its kind, according to Dr. Clarence Epstein, Senior Director of Urban and Cultural Affairs at Concordia University, where this remarkable item is housed. Not only can no one date the object, but there also exists a language etched into its form which is yet to be deciphered. As Dr. Epstein acknowledges, no expert, among the countless he has personally consulted over the past decade, can identify the sculpture's age, artistic tradition, or indeed recognize and decipher the ancient language found etched into its base. Dr. Epstein believes the statue is of a pre-dynastic age. It was originally taken from Alexandria by the Diniacopolis family. It was then shipped with 20 crates of antiquities from Egypt and the Middle East to Canada, where it still resides. However, its whereabouts prior to the shipment are unknown. The statue is of two nude subjects standing 67 centimeters high, one male and the other presumed female. This figure is also noted as possibly holding a child. They are depicted in a sitting position, with noticeable elongated skulls. Now known as the Starving of Sakura, this due to the figure's emaciated frames, just what could this statue represent, or indeed be trying to tell us? How old could it possibly be? And most interestingly of all, what could the enigmatic writing upon its base actually mean? As more research is undertaken, it is only a matter of time before we know its true identity once and for all. During the past few years, we have covered many aspects of Mankuri, Khafra, and Khufu, the three great pyramids of Giza. We have explored numerous amazing facts regarding these structures, which have remained secret for many years. As the interest has grown regarding these three amazing structures, more people with suspicions, hypothesis, and technical and intellectual talents are fortunately beginning to approach these mysterious and wonderful structures in more explorative ways. We are experiencing the beginning of an ancient Egyptian renaissance, thanks to the gift of modern technology. At the beginning of this year, an international team of researchers began investigating the buildings from afar, gazing at them with unusual cameras. Using state-of-the-art infrared heat detection technology, they have discovered some surprising anomalies regarding the heat signatures visible on their faces. What these thermal anomalies reveal are undiscovered shafts, more than likely leading to additional and undiscovered secret tombs deep within these amazing pyramids. The thermal scanning that they have successfully completed has revealed that there are many of these temperature fluctuations, in many areas undocumented as containing anomalies. Thus, what the team has done is pinpoint unexplored shafts dotted across the pyramids. The team also found a particularly impressive anomalous signature located on the eastern side of the Khufu Pyramid, very close to ground level. 
From the beginning, the team had always maintained that they would publicly disclose their findings. All of the staggering finds were made public by Antiquities Minister Mamdou El Damati. During a press briefing, quote, There is something like a small passage in the ground that you can see, leading up to the pyramid's ground, reaching an area with a different temperature. What will be behind it? said El Damati. The scanning was done throughout a 24-hour period, allowing the researchers to monitor subtle temperature changes as the pyramids heated up and then cooled down during the day and night. Though the huge granite and limestone blocks which make up most of the pyramid, this technology was capable of recognizing the slight differentials in their temperature. By monitoring the speed of this heating and cooling, thanks to these miraculous cameras, the researchers were able to isolate several persistent anomalies. Thus, they may have just unlocked more of the pyramid's secrets in one day using state-of-the-art technology than Egyptian antiquities or archaeologists worldwide have in more than 100 years. While the difference in temperature between most adjacent limestone blocks was between 0.1 to 0.5 degrees Celsius, the largest of heat anomalies discovered on and within the Great Pyramid was an impressive 6 degrees warmer than the surrounding bricks. So far, there are plenty of theories being put forward as to what these heat anomalies might indicate. Not surprisingly, with the leading assumptions being that of just empty areas, a hypothesis I'm sure some would like to make a reality. The good news is that the study, which is called Operation Scan Pyramids, will continue. Next, the researchers intend to use cosmic particles called radiographic muons to create a 3D reconstruction of the pyramids of Giza in an attempt to map all the secret chambers and passageways within the pyramids. We will keep you posted on their future finds.